Welcome everyone to another edition of the Classic Comic Archive. A series where I recap and review many of Marvel Comics' most seminal early issues. Our story for today is Tales to Astonish 13, cover dated November of 1960. This issue marks the first appearance of Groot and was written by Stan Lee and Larry Lieber and drawn by Jack Kirby. Our issue opens up with a striking splash page, showing our hero Leslie Evans as he's bravely defying the monstrous Groot from Planet X. But before we can witness this epic showdown, we must first travel back several nights earlier, as Leslie and his wife Alice are returning home from a late party. They're driving through an area of wilderness when Leslie spots a strange glowing object falling from the sky. He screeches to a halt and watches as it lands in an area of forest not far from them. Being an inquisitive scientist, Leslie is eager to approach the object for a closer look, but Alice complains that she's too tired and that they should go home instead. Not wanting to upset his wife, Leslie tables the matter and the pair return home. But the issue then shifts forward several days later. While he's still curious about the object, Leslie has been too busy with his work as a biologist to return to the spot that it landed. But he's driven back to it as Alice barges into his laboratory and tells him some strange news. Apparently two trees outside of their home have gone missing, along with the wooden fence of a neighbor. At first Leslie assumes this to be nothing more than an odd prank, but then starts to wonder if they might be connected to the object in the forest. If only to satiate what might just be a wild imagination, he puts on his coat and heads off to find out. Thus the issue shifts forward sometime later as Leslie is approaching the area of forest that the object had landed in. He finds that it's still glowing a bright yellow, the source of which is a massive wooden monster. It's somehow attracting a swarm of wooden objects as if it were a magnet, which it's then absorbing to make itself stronger. Luckily the monster doesn't notice Leslie, giving him an opportunity to flee back to town and warn the others, he first heads to the sheriff's office, where his unbelievable claim is met with skepticism. But any hesitation to act disappears when the wooden monster begins lumbering towards town. The sheriff and his deputies then race out with rifles, and along with a group of onlookers, meet it at the edge of town. There the monster mightily declares that he is Groot, King of Planet X. He's come to Earth to kidnap their town, as he and his people want to experiment on its residents. Of course none of them want to be lab rats to a bunch of trees, so they flippantly tell Groot to get lost. But he doesn't take kindly to this insolence, and declares that defying him is a useless endeavor, as he is the master of all timber, and will simply command the forest to encase the town in a living wall. Then he'll compel their roots to grow deep underneath it, until they've formed a tight net. One that he'll then catapult into space and to his planet. Yet even after hearing this insane plan, the townsfolk are still determined to fight back. But Groot once again claims that their defiance is useless, as even if they tried, their rifles can't hurt him. But the sheriff doesn't heed this warning, as he signals his deputies to fire. But before they have the chance, Leslie leaps onto a makeshift barricade and bravely declares that he's going to destroy Groot. Yet as the monster then angrily reaches out to attack him, Leslie hastily flees. Groot doesn't bother pursuing him any further, as he's then struck by the deputy's bullets. But like he had claimed, they're completely harmless to him. So the townsfolk resort to burning him with flaming torches, but that effort also fails, as his bark is too tough to catch fire. At this point Groot has had enough of the town's insolence, and thus orders the surrounding forest to begin encasing it. But the issue then shifts back to Leslie, who's hurriedly working on something in his laboratory. Alice finds him there and brands him a coward for staying inside while the rest of the town's men are still desperately trying to fight Groot. But he ignores her and diligently continues his work. It takes him over a day to finish it, by which point Groot is almost ready to kidnap the town. So Leslie rushes out to make do on his promise, as under the cover of darkness he sneaks behind the monster and drops off what he'd been working on. Amazingly, Groot is dead only a few minutes later. A crowd quickly gathers around his corpse and wonders what could have possibly defeated him. Thus Leslie reveals that he had been breeding hungry termites in his laboratory, ones that not even Groot could withstand. The issue subsequently ends as a resident mocks the sheriff for his comparatively simple plan and as a grateful Alice hugs Leslie and claims that she'll never complain about him again. That concludes Groot's first appearance in Tales to Astonish 13 and another episode of the Classic Comic Archive. But as always, I would like to offer a brief review of this issue. Overall, I thought that this was a fairly average and unremarkable story. These days Groot is one of Marvel's most popular characters. 
But after reading this issue, I'm not surprised that it took over 50 years for him to catch on, and in a completely different form. Honestly, Groot was just another generic monster who was defeated by a clever hero. There's really not much to it, nor of my review, so let me know what you thought of this issue and the video, and feel free to suggest other classic comics for me to cover. Thanks for watching.